Hello and welcome to Console Training. My name is Alex Hughes and today we're going through Grand MA2 basics, building and using macros in our workflow. So I've got a really simple little setup here. Uh, and today we're using the template show file. So if we go back up, demo shows, load show file, we're using the demo, demo and more, which is on every console as far down as 2.8 by the look of it. Uh, I've slightly modified our view and basically what we've got here is we've got a very basic festival situation. So I've got one little thing here which runs our show which we're just going to call show and then we've got just sort of a blue state which is going to be our, uh, our intermediate sort of thing between acts. So we're imagining that we're at a festival. So the most used macro that I discover with people is sort of transitional macros. So things that they can tap and put somewhere to slowly transition so things don't snap. So we're going to, uh, we're going to build one of those. So if we want to bring up macros, you can go click on any empty pool that you want or part of your uh, view. Go pools, click on macros. And because this is a preset show file, there's a bunch of macros. So we're going to scroll down all the way and then go from here. So we're starting at 99. So macros can do anything that you can do out of the command line, essentially. That's all we're doing. And it's just a set of predefined commands. So the first thing that we want it to do is we, with our little thing, imagine that we've got all our show sort of playbacks here, and they, or they could be faders. We want to turn all of these off and go to our blue state. So if we turn this little executor on and off and click on our little yellow circle, we can see that what we're doing is we're toggling executor 10, which is the button page or fader page, number 104. So if we wanted to do the same thing in a macro, we'd just repeat that. So if we go toggle exec, because we can shorten it from executor, page 10 dot, and we are going to go 106, because I can't remember what the number was. That's 104, so we want to toggle that. Then if we run our macro, we can see that it does that action, which is good, but it's only about half of what we want to do. We want to turn off 101 through 110. So if I change our macro to be off exec page 10, 101 through 110, and we run this, it will actually turn anything off that we've put there. So if I store just an empty exec here, and we store another one here, we can turn them on. And if we run our macro, it's going to turn them off. Now we can see, if we look at it, that it snaps. We don't really want to snap, we want it to sort of be a bit theatrical. So, if we tack on at the end, fade two, it's going to fade everything out over two seconds. So if we bring our show one in, and we bring our two empty sequences in, and we run our macro again, we can see that everything sort of fades slowly and nicely, which is what we want. We want it to just, you know, gradually do things, and we don't want it to look too like we've just smashed down our Grandmaster. So that's part one. And while we're here, we're just going to quickly click a sign, and we're going to call it changeover, so we know what it is. We're going to do it in two words so that it sits right. Now, obviously, in in the uh, in the, the world of magic that we have in pre-production world, nothing ever runs out of the programmer. But sometimes you'll have something running. So this is just an all preset. And if we scroll up here for a sec, let's say that we're in a uh, in a let's go with an up position, and let's say that we've got some effects running like that. Yeah, perfect. Some effects. We're running out of the programmer. Now, obviously, when we hit this macro, we wanted to also clear our programmer. So if we go back in here and we go clear all, 
and we can also just test the lines. So if we click test line, it'll do it. It does it. However, it does it with a snap, which once again, we don't want. We want everything to fade nicely. So we can do that in a couple of ways. We could leave our program time up, which essentially just it modifies any timings that we have. So I can set that to two. And if we use our oops button to just bring back our, uh, our little state here, if we run our macro, we can see everything fades reasonably nicely. So we could do it with program time. And if we look, once again, if we wanted to manipulate program time, we can click on it and look in our command line again, and we can see that what our action is, is toggling special master 2.2. So we want it to do two actions at once, essentially. We can step it out if you want, but if you want to do two actions at once, you can put in a little semicolon and we can go toggle. Now we can type special master or we can type sm 2.2. .2. And we can see that it automatically completes it to toggle that. Now if we go back and we run it, we can see that it turns it on and off just by toggling it like that. And it's clearing it all as well. If we want to get a little bit more fancy, we can even move that special master. So before we do anything, we want it to move that special master into the right position. So if we go special master 2.2 .2 at 3, because we're using the timing, we'll see that when we run this macro, that's going to move to 3, like so. And it's going to toggle it. Not sure the on action will work, but we'll find out. It does. Cool. Perfect. There you go. There's something we hadn't tested before. So what we want it to do, is we want it to make sure that the special master is set at uh, three seconds. We want it to turn off executor, do that. We also want it to clear. We want to make sure that our special master is on so that it takes that fade time. And then we're going to want to turn on our, uh, our little blue state here, which we can see turns on like that. And we can see that it's got something very interesting in there. There's a delay dimmer, which we haven't covered. So we'll turn that off. Apologies. So we can see that it just turns on like that. So when we write into our change of a macro, we can go, go exec page 10, 1, 11, and we can see that if we run things now, we've turned our blues off, we'll also bring our look back in, and we'll quickly out of our programmer, run a bit of an effect, doesn't have to be anything crazy, yep, we can see that that's running, if we run our macro, you can see that it slowly fades out and then brings that in. So it's running our actions. What we could also do is we can pile in another line such as off exec 10.111. And instead of it being a follow, we could make it a go, which means that if we go through and run our things again for a sec, the first click, we'll put it in blue, and then if we run it again, it'll turn off that executor. If we put it in the right spot, we actually want it to follow up until that point. So now if we run it, we can see that it stops at line four because it's waiting to run the next line. Then when we click it again, it turns it off. So once again, with our off, we can put in a fade type of two. And if we also don't want it to have our, uh, our little special master on, we can also go off special master 
and we can see that it turns it off. That's a very basic yet advanced macro. And this is the thing with macros, we can make it very, very advanced if we want to. We can call presets. Anything you can essentially do out of the programmer, we can do from here. Uh, we can make it take selection, we can use variables, and we'll be covering that in a future video. But for now, that's a, it's not exactly a basic one because we've involved some slightly advanced concepts, but this is a, uh, a medium level macro. And obviously, if you want to look at macros, you can right click, and there's a bunch of predefined ones, and some of the predefined ones are absolutely fantastic, such as this one, which is assigning effects. So this one assigns it and asks our questions, so if we click this, it's going to ask which speed group number. So let's say speed group one. And we're, we've covered this before, but if we want to go effect one through five, it's going to have assigned all of these effects to Speedmaster one automatically. Uh, let's keep having a look. So we've also got one to do the align key. We can also run our backup button. We can black out screens. We can create chases, we can do circular copy. There's lots of things that we can do, and these are just the predefined ones. You know, we can export our patch. And of course, the benefit of macro is that we can assign it places. So if we go assign, change over, we can chuck it here. We can also give it a name, such as blue hold if we want we can add little bits of information in we can disable lines we can even add timings in if we want so if we wanted everything to happen and wait over one second if we test our macro we can see that things happen slowly rather than instantly Anyway, there's a really quick little uh, macro building one. I'm sure you'll have questions and uh, feel free to put your questions below. Uh, if you want to look more into macros, we've done some advanced stuff with variables and stuff, but uh, thank you for watching.